Hello Virgo, I'm Nicholas Ashball. Welcome to your January 2024 forecast. As always, this is going to help you navigate through all of the opportunities in the month ahead. And in this case, it's going to help you start off the new year on the right foot. So I'm very happy that you're here. This morning in dreams, I picked up on a beautiful vision. I opened up this gigantic wardrobe and I saw a lot of different formal attire. So there were tuxedos, there were dresses, and there were all of the sort of accoutrements that would go with that. As I took a look at all of this, I just felt this sense of joy, of pride. I felt my heart skip a beat and I got the feeling that good news was coming. And there was also this encouragement or nudge from spirit to go try something on. So looking the part is important. We know it's not the end all be all, but if you want people to take you seriously and you're perhaps throwing your hat in the ring for uh, promotion or you wanna go on a first date or you have an interview, definitely embody the professional look and feel that you think they would want, but also that you want to convey because it's all about the whole package. So why not kind of put the cherry on top and really kind of like seal the deal with, with a professional approach. So for some of you, this is saying get out of your comfort zone and maybe dress up or dress differently a little bit because it could help you access a part of yourself that you may not otherwise be able to. Looking the part can help. The other thing here was trying something on. This can also be a metaphor for putting yourself in a different place that you wouldn't normally be, um, trying a different career, trying a different relationship status, whatever it is, it's really about uh, looking at your life as an opportunity to explore. And the wardrobe is just one metaphor for that exploration. And it's reminding you, you can wear many hats as well. So you don't have to kind of box yourself in anything. To me, this is just such a beautiful metaphor. It's success, it's exploration, and in many ways, it's also preparing for all of this. Um, so the last paragraph or, or bullet here is the most important. It said, look, feel, and embody the energy of success long before it arrives. So we have the six of wands, and we can infer from the fact that there is a wardrobe full of fancy clothes ready for a party that there's something good happening. But what we're really getting from this is the ability to envision and then meet that vision, aka manifest something. So if you're ready and you believe in yourself and you put the energy out there, you can meet the six of wands in the month ahead, okay? So the dress piece is also just sort of like saying, get your heart and your head in the right place because good news is coming. To that end, the next thing that came through was an image of a launch pad, like you would see with one of the space organizations. So I saw something going through the sky, leaving the stratosphere or atmosphere, and I felt like there was just this energy of movement. And we were kind of left in the wake of all the clouds and the chemtrails and all of that stuff. So this is spirit's way for me. Whenever I see rocket or many rockets, it's like the eight of wands. And this is a time where we talked about hats. You may, you may actually be asked to wear different hats professionally. You may be asked to juggle a lot of things in your schedule. And it's a reminder to you, one, that you can do it. And two, that when you start to feel overwhelmed, you can delegate, you can push back, and you really just don't want to get lost in the shuffle because the overarching energy of January for you, Virgo, is all about movement. If there's one day where you don't make a lot of progress, don't worry. You're going to be able to pick it up and make up for lost time in the days or weeks that follow. If you were to look from, you know, 50,000 feet above, you would be able to see that the trend for the month is positive and the energy wants to push you in the right direction. When and where you feel friction or pushback, that's where you want to pay attention and think, is it worth this? Because there are other opportunities where I can actually make more headway. Uh, let's see here. This is also a chance where you want to embrace the idea that things could happen faster. Sometimes we get really tied to arbitrary deadlines that we, our family, our boss, whomever might put out there for, you know, whatever reason. You could be able to surpass this or there may be something better that you can put your time and energy behind. Focus on first the energy of launching something, but then also just allowing for that momentum to carry you through to the next thing. So let's now take a look at the third and final dream that I picked up on. I saw an announcement of some sort. For some, for some of you, this could actually represent marketing. If you are a business person, this is an invitation from spirit to spend a little bit of time, energy, or resources in the area of marketing. It doesn't have to be paid marketing. It could be like social media presence or something like that, but definitely putting yourself out there. And then if someone has invited you or talked to you or kind of passed an idea in your direction, this is also about RSVP, like getting back to them. 
um, because they're awaiting that. Now, specifically for those of you that might be job seeking, not only, of course, will you be updating your CV or resume, but also take a look at any sort of online presence you have from a website to a blog to the social networks that you have there. Make sure that it's all the way you want it to be, because, of course, nowadays people are going to do a deeper dive into everything that's on the web. Um, this can help you as long as it's kind of kept up to date and it's tidy. Um, Finally, people are more receptive to what you have to say, to what you have to offer, and that's why this is a month where almost every single piece of the dream was associated with um, preparation, dressing for success, movement, and then putting your, your thoughts, your ideas out there because you can ride this energy into a really productive, successful, and fulfilling first month of the new year. All right, Virgo, let's give the cards a shuffle and see what's coming through here in January. And we're gonna use the traditional Rider Waite Smith deck. It's my favorite. Uh, and it just felt really appropriate for you today. I use so many different ones that sometimes I just wanna to go to like the source here. <laughs> we can already see some really big changes and moves coming through, but let's get all the cards pulled first and then we'll, we'll dig deeper. Let's get started with your two Catalyst cards. There was one that just kind of volunteered itself from the deck. It was Connection, and it was kind of upside down or on its side, and I'll talk about the significance of that. And then there was this Open to Receive. Both of these really feed into each other, but we're gonna start with this one first. So the Connection card, which just kind of like landed on the table, um, and because it wasn't completely upright, what this could mean for some of you is, you know, I saw the RSVP component, if you're sitting on an invite, if you are vacillating and thinking, I don't know, maybe I want to go, maybe I don't want to go, this is saying it's worth putting yourself out there. For many of you, there could be an important connection at some sort of a party, gathering, or networking affair. Now we have the biggest opportunity for January, and it says open to receive. So this is a beautiful energy here. We kind of see healing coming through. There may be a part of your life where you were not receiving what you thought you deserved in finances, in love, in opportunity. January is changing that for you, but there's some reprogramming that has to be done here and here. So getting out of that, oh, I wish or I hope, or maybe this will happen into, I've done the work, I won't question it when it happens, I'm ready, bring it on universe. Really getting in that mindset, just like I was talking about opening the closet, putting on a celebratory outfit, and you're starting this new year with the idea, we've got something to celebrate, I'm coming prepared. And if you're ready to receive, the universe is ready to deliver. I think that the hardest thing for many of you is simply reprogramming your thoughts that this is a year of abundance, of opportunity, that you don't have to wait any longer, that there isn't going to be a lack or there doesn't have to be unnecessary friction. Change for the better. We can actually sum up these two cards with that. This is unavoidable, incontrovertible. It's happening. Something is happening, change. And then this is modifying or, or kind of like amplifying what kind of change. And it's positive change, folks. So the four of wands. What is it a change in? Just like the connection card, there's someone new coming in. So it's a change in relationship status. Some of you might be going from a place where something wasn't serious to where it's getting serious. For those of you that have felt like you're on the outside looking in professionally, this could be an advocate when it comes to career. 
if you've been a little lonely when it comes to your just friends, you know, the sort of social sphere that you have, this is an increase in that. Now, there's something that you can't control about the timing. So all you have to do is say, I'm ready. I'm ready to receive and I'm going to keep doing my work. And then when the universe has kind of aligned everything, that person or that opportunity will come knocking probably when you least expect it, possibly even when you're not 100% prepared, which is why preparation was part of the channeled messages. For those of you that are watching this, this is getting you primed for that. So you'll remember, oh, Nicholas talked about this. I got the call from my agent or I got a call from a friend that I talked to years ago and they thought of me for something or they asked me out on a second date. If you went out on a date, something's getting more serious when it comes to a connection. Don't second guess it. There's a lot of necessary movement and change happening in your life, and it's been a long time building. And this is a time, as I said, to go with movement. So if someone's exiting, let them exit. If someone's coming in, don't fight it. If you're being asked to try something different to partner up with someone, this is especially for those of you that might be a student or working, um, maybe even a new roommate situation, this could be good. It may be something different, but different can be good because this is the underlining energy of this. I'm not as worried about it. If it was the reverse, I would say this relationship could be a little chaotic. But when um, this is just on top of it, it's saying you're trying to adjust to good news, good partnerships and good opportunities. And that's not a bad thing. So just something happening at a speed that was unexpected. Eight of Swords can't see it coming. Even with this reading, there's something about it that is unconventional. And by the way, Spirit likes to sometimes keep us from uh, like spoiling a surprise. Some, if there's something that's meant to happen, you'll just get the, the sort of like outline of it. But there's sometimes if you're too prepared, you ruin the surprise. So there's some good news and I can't see all of the pieces, but I can see enough to tell you that it's okay that something good is happening, so embrace it. Let's take a look at deep past. We have the Knight of Pentacles here. The deep past, of course, is gonna be the year that you just left behind. So 2023 is summed up by Knight of Pentacles reversed, and that is not being afraid to ask for something if you need it. It takes a while to get there, right? We're taught sometimes to just blend in, don't cause a stir, don't shake the tree, whatever kind of phrase you wanna use. But I think on a soul level, you learn that the squeaky wheel does get the oil. So if there's something that you need, speak up. This is also a time where you're going to prioritize your needs and your growth. Because a Knight of Pentacles in reverse is saying, I'm going to take a little bit of this and spend it on me. I'm investing in myself for the future. Maybe it's buying an outfit. Maybe it's going to school. Maybe it's spending a little bit more time on physical and mental health so that you have the foundation from which you can grow and build more upon. Most importantly, this card reminds you that you can change direction. Sometimes we feel like, you know, I signed up for that when I was a kid and I always thought I was going to do this. This is a path that I have to always be on. No, you don't. You're allowed to change your mind as much as you need to. Obviously, you want to see things through to completion, but there does come a point where whether it's school or a relationship or a job, everything that you needed to sort of learn in that has been learned. And then you get a chance to pivot left or right. Now, there may be something where, you know, this this could mean that you have new partnership, someone new coming in that wants to take the journey with you. It could also mean that there is a sort of path where you're going to go in different directions. This can cut either way. But uh, the most important thing here is that you owe it to yourself to continue to explore and to continue to grow. And I do see a partnership where I think both parties can be focusing on that without having to. It, has, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Right. So. Find someone in your life that gets that and might be on a similar journey of personal growth. That's something, just a little bit of a fast forward that I'm seeing here because we have a knight and a page, very compatible energies, both of them pursuing things, both of them very open. And so that might be the sort of overarching energy of some of these partnerships, give and take. We see more give and take. As we look at the recent past, we have the Eight of Swords. Some of you just came out of an unexpected chapter of your life as well. There's going to be some more changes, but there could have been something that you got into where you're like, oh, I wish I dug a little deeper. Um, there was some fine print. There was something unexpected that it didn't necessarily have to be good or bad, but you, you may have thought, uh, I, I don't want that to repeat. So one of the karmic lessons coming into 2024, uh, again, we talked a little bit about it in channel, but now I'm getting a clearer understanding of it is do your research, do your homework, ask. 
Don't be afraid to talk to people that have been through a similar situation. This is especially true if you're going to move into a house or apartment or a neighborhood or a new job and you, you need to sort of feel it out, the, the sort of environment or community or what's the word, the morale sort of stuff, making sure that all of that you have an, a feeling for if it's compatible with your energy, okay? So ask around, do your homework, and read all of the fine print, and this is going to help set you up for more success. And if there are surprises, they won't be big surprises, okay? So that's basically it. Be inquisitive and um, be curious. It, it actually is going to help you out. Lo and behold, this is the, the featured card that I had here with, when I was talking about um, formal attire. We get a confirmation of that here with the Six of Wands. So some important things to know with the Six of Wands card. A lot of times you are leading the charge. We see someone here on a horse. We see people around them, but we're not really focusing on the crowd. We're focusing on this person. This is a period of time where at the beginning it may feel a little isolated, a little lonely, a little bit, you know, like, am I doing the right thing? But as long as you're following your own personal North Star, you'll be all right. It's not about trying to please or even anticipate what others expect so much as it is I'm aligning to something that I want to do that is fulfilling and that is really uh, close to what my heart and soul tells me I should be doing. That is how I kind of quantify success. It's not just recognition. It's not just money. It's not just title. It's the other deeper soul sort of energy that's coming through. All of that being said, um, it does feel like you are able to, to achieve a lot this particular year and this particular month. I keep saying year because we're kicking off the new year, but um, I couldn't ask for a better card in the crowning position. This one basically indicates a month in which you can make a really big splash and where the spotlight is on you. Let's take a quick glance in the environment because it's helping me quantify these two cards and why this appeared. So we'll get to this in a second, but in the environment, we have a card that shows a little bit of lack. So the four of pentacles could be a friend, a partner, or a job where you're not getting the support you need. We have then the ability to pull more in successfully and change this sort of habit or change this cycle. And when I look at your wealth card, we have the spider, which is able to get what they want. <laughs> A little bit of patience is required here, but you have the ability to pull in resources and it will stick this time. Whatever it is that you need, it can stick. So don't accept less than what you deserve. Ask for more if you need it. It's coming through yet a second time. It's not as hard this month as it was perhaps last year. You're starting to get a little bit more and it's going to be better. This is what's around you, but this is where the opportunity sits. You might be afraid to ask for it, but it's here nonetheless. And we have a really good indicator here for that. So I just had to kind of like underline that I'm seeing that there could be someone around you that wants to, they're either, it's not just frugal, they're just not giving you what you deserve. And you'll know where that exists. It's not always with money. It could be respect, it could be time, or it could be support. But whatever that is, there's a lot of other opportunities, people, etc., that are there for you. Put the energy in those sort of cups rather than that other person, all right? Now let's look at you, how you're showing up. You're hanging out for a second to see what it's all about, and I'm okay with the hanged man in the upright position. It comes through for enlightenment. I like that there is a cautious and even a sort of um, unconventional approach to the way that you're seeing things. The hangman is able to see the world upside down, inside out, in another dimension. And this is your key to success this month. You're not taking the path that's well-traveled. You're taking the one that is unique to yourself. And I said this earlier, and now it's coming through again. Others may not get it, but then eventually you're going to get the support that you need because there's something innovative, unusual, or very authentic about what you're doing. And by pausing and making sure that you're looking both to the future and learning from the past, you'll be okay. Don't rush anything. That's why the hangman's coming through. Make sure that you've gotten everything out of a given situation and then you can move forward. You do not need to hold on to something that doesn't serve you either. Um, so just because it's there, just because it's safe, just because it's easy to predict doesn't mean that it's all that there is. And so in the environment, there is a person, place, or thing that isn't enough and it's okay to recognize that that person place or thing isn't enough the challenge this month is in letting go 
we have an upgrade coming through here, a Knight of Cups. This is creativity. This is love. This is opportunity. This is worth the wait. This is worth asking and, and waiting for more if you need to. It's not settling or uh, allowing for something less than what is required. So for those of you looking for love, this is really, really auspicious. It could be a water sign. For those of you looking to make more of a splash, no pun intended since we have water, but make a splash when it comes to your career or being noticed, these two together are really auspicious. And for those of you looking to get into a better space emotionally, an upright Knight of Cups is showing that it's going in the right direction. And that came from doing the work, folks. This is doing the work, this is doing the work, this is graduation. As we take a look here at the outcome, we have Nine of Swords in reverse. So this is showing a lessening of fear or anxiety, an understanding that things may be much better than you anticipated, but there's also an encouragement here not to retread old ground when it comes to uh, maybe putting yourself in unnecessary stress or pressure. There are times where we can use that to get things done, you know, having a deadline, uh, really wanting to achieve and, and do, do things in a, in a pinch, sometimes it's okay, but it's not a sustainable thing. And at any age, you can't continue to burn the candle at both ends and not get the necessary rest. Nine of Swords is also just stress management. So you may feel this month that you, you, know, you might need to lean on someone or, uh, or talk to someone about what's going on. I would absolutely encourage that because there are too many positive cards, including this one. These two affect each other. So success is incoming. But it, again, it requires you standing up for what you need. And if you don't have enough to ask for more, don't be afraid because we have success in the crowning position. Let's go ahead and extend this. We're going to go into the expanded forecast and look at health, wealth, love, and destiny, beginning with health, which is your mind, your body, and your spirit. In the area of health, we have the wise one. This would be closely connected to the hermit. Grow within your current situation. What a nice compliment also to the hanged man. It's saying, again, hang out for a second wherever you're at and really focus on why you're there, what you can do to heal and learn from the situation, and if you wanna make a change, how you can do so and make it stick the first time. Kind of like a gymnastic um, athlete that can stick a landing. I kind of get that mental image. It's a lot of practice that gets you to that point, but when it comes to the gold medal, it's gonna be worth it, all right? So wise one. You have a chance to learn something and not only that, but not repeat something again. A cycle is closing because you've learned the lesson. And when you recognize that, great things can happen. Let's connect this to all of the other cards here. So there are two cards that really want, well, three that I need to focus on because these are your areas of opportunity. For some of you, you're moving. I don't know why I didn't see this until now, but I see it right now. So this can represent um, being between two places, you might be staying with friends or family, or you may be moving in with someone. And this can be tumultuous even when it's a perfect relationship because if you've been alone for a while or if you really like your own space, you're going to have to find a way to blend your everything, basically. So I'm acknowledging that some of you are in that transitional space with living, um, living environment and even like relationship status. So let the dust settle, take your time, Try not to go to a place of stress. Try to communicate. We're lacking swords here, um, like communicative swords. The Eight of Swords is feeling like you're not being seen or heard. So obviously we want to go into the more expressive swords here and have like a page of swords where you're listening and you're speaking and things are going in the right direction. So that's one thing. It's change for the better, but it's change and it's going to take some time to get used to. The Hanged Man card is a reminder to get moving. Uh, there is a cautionary note when it comes to your heel and your Achilles tendon and your insole, however. I'm getting like little energetic um, sensations there. So for some of you, make sure that if your shoes are hurting or if you're not wearing the right types of shoes for the right activities that you get that taken care of. If you have any sort of pain or discomfort, see like an orthopedic specialist. Um, but generally speaking, that part of the foot can be sensitive because you can see that's what's being tied up here. Uh, this is also just simply saying that you might be standing or sitting too much. Movement and shifting of movement and weight is going to be really important so that your body isn't stressing too much on one point. Actually, to that end, one thing that I'm picking up on, it's more of a mediumship message, but it does feel like some of you are, it could be because there's a high heel or because of the support in the shoe, but there is one part of the foot that is just 
feeling that pain. So changing up your footwear and having more than one pair of shoes is really important and staying out of high heels where that point goes into like one part of the foot is going to be really, really vital. Standard disclaimer applies here. I am not a podiatrist or an orthopedic surgeon, but I picked up on things um, from a medium sort of level. So if you are feeling that, talk to your doctor about that and hopefully you can, um, you can rectify it. This has to do with both the quality and the quantity of your sleep. And as you can see, it could have to do with, you know, choosing a different mattress or bed or pillow. It can also be how much distraction or even the color of the paint in the room. There's so many things that could basically be affecting how well you're sleeping. So do a quick audit of your sleeping space. Focus then on also things like exercise and meditation that can help with stress management. And then if there's anything that's going on where you're waking up too much, this is something you talk to a doctor about because there are a number of physical things that could be going on in the body that could also be affecting sleep. But those are the three things, your living situation, the movement of your body and the balance in your body, and then more specifically a point on the foot and then sleep quantity and quality. Those are the things that jump out here. Don't ignore something um, because it can get uh, it can get more intensified if you don't take care of it. Better to deal with something sooner than later, okay? Otherwise, I think that's pretty much everything here. This can also be like overdoing it. So overeating, overexercising, overstressing. So moderation is necessary. And that's it. Let's go ahead and move on from health to wealth, looking at resources, life purpose, and career. As I said earlier, you have the spider, which is a really, really good manifesting card. Why is it good? Because a spider has two or three things working in its favor. It, as a metaphor, things have a tendency to stick when we get this symbol that comes through. So if you plan on launching, starting, or doing something um, in January, it can stick. Um, a spider can capture or take advantage of a, a moment or a situation so you can capitalize on that moment, on that synchronicity when it comes through. And a spider usually can fend for itself. It's, it's got a good defense mechanism and a good protection around it. Um, the only thing to be mindful of here is patience. A spider will sit and wait and pay attention to the vibration and the frequency, and it knows when it's time to go for something. So when you feel the call, answer the call. All right, let's connect the spider to everything else that we see here. I wanna start with like the most auspicious card here, which is the Six of Wands. The overarching opportunity and energy for January is success. The key that unlocks all of this, though, is the tower. And the tower is saying you have to be willing and ready to lean into the necessary changes. There could be, for some of you, you might not even have a say in it. So let's say that uh, you were working at a job and it closes shop because of you know downsizing or a merger or whatever. So you didn't even have to consider it. The tower helped you see it's time to look for other things because there was something about an existing uh, opportunity or thing in your environment that just wasn't supplying what you needed. So the universe just took it out of the equation. So some of you are in that energy of necessary change. And again, you may not have a say in it. For those that do have a say, you see what you want and you're willing to move strategically in that direction. And that's okay. Letting go and embracing change. Those are the two challenges, but the payoff is good. The, the Page of Pentacles is good here because you're receiving something, but there's resistance in like the, again, the time, the place, or the fact that it's happening. So once you're open to receive, once you embrace the change, once you let go of something, things start to go in the right direction. I think one thing that many of you are looking at and you're saying, Nicholas, I'm tired of this. There could be something going on in your life where you just feel like I'm, I'm blending in, I'm not appreciated. I hear you. And I think it's important to feel like you are part of the team that people see, appreciate and embrace you. And if you're not getting that, then you don't need me to tell you to, it's time to move on. But these cards are showing that this might be the moment to do that. Look at the beautiful sunset behind me, by the way, all those rich colors in the background. Um, and that's a nice metaphor for kind of what we're going through uh, in these cards here, especially if you take a look at the tower, there actually is the purple color of the clouds in this particular card. So the tower just clears the air and helps you see what you need to. Let's now go back into the cards and look at this from three different perspectives for those that have a job, for those that are looking for work and those that might be retired or not focusing on work. So the good news again is I see sort of like this um, 
mushrooming energy, like it's growing really fast. So the tower can show that you are, you just met this connection or this opportunity that's knocking and growth is happening at an exponential level. So for many of you, finding your footing during this growth is key. And this is where this kind of connection or networking is key. So this could be a mentor, a friend, it could be your partner, um, not in business, but in love that's there to kind of get, have your back and keep you balanced. You need a stabilizing force, for, even for those that are on this really positive trajectory. And you can't do it all on your own. So take a break, uh, lean on others for support, have some fun, and really focus on stress management. If you're in a place in your life where you're not getting recognized, Maybe or, or maybe there's success, but you're feeling like you're missing out on things like love and family and other things. You're weighing up the opportunity cost of doing it and saying, is this worth sacrificing that? And also, it's just a reminder that you can't take the money with you. You can take the love. You can take the wisdom. You can take the personal growth. But if it's when we're just looking at finances, if it's not enough, then sometimes it's like, why am I stressing about this? You can't fix everything too at some, some places that you're working. So this is really about focusing on personal stability, the, on core relationships and your own fulfillment. Those things will be the lenses through which you see opportunity in your life and they're going to help you make the best choices. Can you grow right now? Yes. Is there a lot going on at once? Yes. And for some of you, are you not getting enough support? Yes. So you're going to have to rectify those things. But if you can, and I believe you can, then you can go further than you expected. This is a chance for you really to, to get what you deserve and get what you've worked really, really hard for. All right, so success but stress management and time management are the big takeaways for those that are currently working and not doing too much, not basically uh, working until your battery is on empty. For those of you that are seeking a job, this is really interesting because it may require a physical move. You definitely want to reach out to your existing network. You may be worried about dis disrupting someone or whatever, but I do feel like that person may be very, very happy to help you. And that's the necessary component to break through this. Um, it's a change. If you've been going through a period where there's not a lot happening, stagnation, this is a change for the better. But it requires reaching out, leaning on someone, and then when an offer comes through, just not second guessing it, not waiting for the other shoe to drop, knowing that it'll be okay. Stress isn't gonna help. Talk to people, uh, look outside of your normal career or even physical locality and you could actually end up getting something sooner than expected that way. If you're retired right now, it does feel like there's a lot of stress or pressure around money. One thing that might be happening is there's a lot of open hands asking for things, so you can push back on that. That's something I've seen a lot this month. Some of you may be deciding to downsize. The Tower and the Four of Wands, it can also just be saying like, I don't need as much space. I just need enough for, for even for those of you that are married, it might just be you and your partner. You don't need as much for the extended family anymore, uh, especially if your children are uh, moved and gone away, or if you don't have children, you're just looking at the space and thinking, why are we spending this much on that? You might liquidate this to get more assets as well. I think you want to be mindful of that. Don't rush through anything uh, in this period of time. You just you want to do your homework, as we've talked about earlier. Um, other things for those that are retired, have some more fun. Do some things that you love. Um, this is also more about meeting people. It doesn't have to be love, though it can be. Um, but it's definitely doing artistic, expressive, fun sort of things. And I'm not necessarily getting travel. I think you can do this exactly where you're at. Um, just, just meeting new people in your community, getting out and seeing who's out there and doing things that you love and meeting people that are like-minded there. Okay, let's move on from wealth to love, speaking about love. And we have triumphant success here, but it basically to me reads like a big old ace of swords. And that connects with the final message that I had in my dream uh, interpretation and channel messages, which was RSVP. So when it comes to love, yeah, say yes, put yourself out there. Um, it's also about speaking your mind and expressing yourself and letting people know your perspective. Um, this is a chance for your voice to be heard, for your feedback to be welcomed, and you might have to make the first move. We do have success here, but it is about you speaking, acting, or doing something potentially first. 
Let's break this down. We're going to start with those in an existing relationship. Things could be getting serious. You might have been dating for a while. You're looking at this relationship from a different perspective and you're saying, let's do this. Maybe you're moving in together. Maybe you're agreeing to see each other exclusively. Maybe there's marriage. There could also be the birth of someone new in this. So to me, I'm reading positive change and growth because of all of the cards around it. But it's hard to let go of the old way of being even in that relationship. And that constitutes the biggest challenge. So we have a communication card here. Let me put it under this so the reflection is not as bad. Um, and what we have here is someone who doesn't feel like you hear or see them. It could be you, it could be your partner, it could be both of you. So a change in this energy is just listening more, talking more, asking a little bit, tell me about this or where are we at on that? So kind of really cultivating that communication habit in the relationship is key. It's important to talk about money and fears because the four pentacles can be both of these. And if you're having a hard time letting go of something, reach out to them because it feels like they have what they, like they have advice. They want to help. They want to help you heal and grow. So if you're open to ask and then receive whatever love, support and advice they have to offer. Yay. Good for that. Now, when it comes to constructive feedback, make sure that you are leading with the supportive and constructive elements. We have basically honey will go further than vinegar here with the Knight of Cups. So start with love, appreciation, positivity, then lead into any constructive criticism. And that's going to help out with that as well. Now, for those of you that are looking for love, can you find it? Yes. Um, we see a change, particularly if there's been stagnation or a lack of movement. So something could come through faster than expected or slower than expected. Um, the only thing that I see here is too many options potentially because we have a night, a page and a night. Um, someone from the past, there could be a couple of options in the present. Whenever this happens, there's a chance to be clearer and more discerning in what you're seeking rather than just throwing out a net, which we kind of see here with the spider web and waiting for the first thing to come through. Be, um, hold your intention and your expectation higher and be patient. It's worth the wait. That's one of the common themes here this month too, is not to rush something unnecessarily. Uh, I really see the water sign coming through the loudest and the clearest, but first things first, there might be a lesson from the past on give and take. And that's what I see with the Knight and the page of pentacles respectively. Let me see if there's anything else that we need to focus on. You know, I think some of you, there's just too much going on. There could be a lot of work energy. You could just be in the process of moving or, um, or maybe getting settled in a new space. And I think that that stuff needs to be kind of like ironed out first. Once that happens, I feel like everything's going in the right direction. Heal your personal finances because any things that you are dealing with in your finances, you may attract in your relationships. So we want to clear out any debt um, anything that hasn't been properly dealt with, just get that balanced first. Okay, now let's focus on those that are um, happily single. As we can see with this, there's a chance to achieve more together. This is a common theme here. So there's a great connection. This could be teaching, mentorship, friendship, or guess what? You may not be looking for love, but there still may be love or this we can look at love with a capital L. So this could just be someone like a best friend that comes into your life and you can love them on that platonic level as well. But it does feel like the heart wants to open up and whether you are in a relationship looking for love or single and happy, don't be afraid to reach out. And on the flip side, don't be afraid to say yes to whatever might be incoming because it's about making sure that the connection works both ways. Don't force the connection. I should say that for everybody, but um, I don't really feel like you have to worry this month. You're going to know when you meet that right person that it's right. Um, personal development, of course, is coming through very loud and clear. Some of you want to change up your uh, living environments a bit and you'll be focusing on that. But it feels like expression and getting out there and being seen is what this is all about meeting like-minded people. So whatever hobby or activity or interest that you have, this is a time to really do a lot more of that. It could lead to uh, not just success, but a successful partnership. So that's coming through again, even though you're not looking for love, there's something based on friendship or something that could help you develop or grow, or maybe again, something in love that wants to come through. And we'll just allow the cards to remind you of that. All right, now let's delve into destiny. We have Sir Nunos coming through here. This is your trajectory. 
And Cernunos comes through with life force messages. It says, express your driving passion. Sensual and sexual powers are increased. Um, I work with a, another deck here. I think it's the Druid Craft one where Cernunos is connected with the devil energy. Um, and I think I understand that because we have the sensual and sexual components here. So this is about expressing yourself. The reversal of this is sometimes closing down on those expressive parts of yourself. So there could have been someone in your life that made you feel bad for wanting to follow a passion, for wanting to dress a certain way since I was shown a wardrobe, uh, for wanting to just do something that made sense to you but didn't fit their template. Too bad for them. This is your month to break free of that. So we're breaking free of conditional love and conditional acceptance and really embracing the creative, the sensual, the sexual powers that want to come through this month and allowing yourself to just be authentic, right? Life force reversed. Some of you are feeling fatigued or are feeling exhausted. I think that this card is what's kind of leading into it. So really, again, focusing on addressing, reducing, and removing stress. That's the number one thing that you can do for, for kind of like increasing your life force and your vitality, for sure. All right, that was pretty powerful and a really important message. Now I feel like we can move on to sun rising and moon sign messages and get an even more clear version of what's coming through for this month ahead. Let me just move things around a little bit so I have more room on the table. And let's give the cards a shuffle. Sun, rising, and moon. Oh my gosh, guys, these are great cards and they're all partnership cards. Hopefully you're seeing a trend here. I certainly am. All right, looking at sun sign first, we have the Ace of Cups. Yes, it's reversed, but it's really, really positive. Again, there is a little bit of resistance here. All of these partnership cards came through reversed. We have the connection card where there are two people making that connection. We have the Ace, which is an offering. Uh, we also have the Four of Wands, which is a really firm foundation. Again, all reversed. So for some of you, it's a, it's a self-confidence thing, right? There could be something where you're just used to it not working. This is different. The template is different. The timeline is different. So to use the second catalyst message to help you, be open to receive love, healing, and happiness. The Ace of Cups wants to come through. Things that you can focus on right now, self-care, emotional, and uh, I would also say um, not just emotional, but mental health. So if there's anything that's impeding from you being able to just really be present in the moment, that's priority one. Increased sensitivity definitely coming through with this, but also a lot of creative energy and a lot of potential to meet new people. And, you know, when it comes to those social and fin um, financial, I was going to say career relationships that are coming through, they'll stick. Partnerships in those areas can stick. So I think overall, really, really good energy, but you have to be ready for it. So do whatever you need to this month to take care of yourself, to stay open and to bring it in. All right, let's move on to rising. In rising and ascendant, we have the 10 of pentacles, a really good card for foundations in business and money. And it's also showing that doors are opening up in these avenues. So a great time to get out there and apply for a new job, a really good time to sign a contract, especially since Mercury goes direct in January. Um, this is also a, a time where some of you may be getting married. Some of you may be joining a larger uh, group of something. So whether this is like a social group or uh, maybe even a professional group networking, all across the board networking is really, really positive. And when it comes to your financial stability and health, the ability to go further and to um, increase the stability, which we like here, okay? There could be a little bit of pressure from friends and family, but the good news is you have what it takes to meet their expectations and surpass them. In fact, the most important thing here is though that you're feeling successful, happy, and fulfilled. Now let's move on to the moon sign. Once again, a love message. This one's reversed. So we have the lovers in reverse, which is a reminder here again that you don't have to say yes if you don't feel it. We don't want to fake the connection. But if good things are landing in your lap and it seems to be a consistent message here, there is no reason to fear it, to, to resist it, to push back on it if it brings joy. You have to be the one that um, is happy with where that sits. This can be used in different ways. So the lovers is simply an indication that people are receptive to what you want to put out into the world. So 
January is the perfect time to begin, to finish, to launch, or to explore some sort of creative or professional endeavor. Things will land very nicely. I talked about sticking the landing from a, gym, a gymnastics perspective. You can stick the landing in this month. Uh, it's a really, really good time to meet new people and maybe even get an audience with someone new. I mean, let's just take off Sun, Rising, and Moon and look at all three of these. Um, they're all positive. This is a receptive card. This is signing on the dotted line. This is another receptive card. So uh, try a few times if you need to. I feel like on the second or third attempt, things will just kind of like coalesce. All right, and that's everything. It's really, really good energy. We're gonna do something special. I forgot to mention it earlier, but I remember it now. We're gonna pull one extra bonus card for the year ahead and see what else you can be focusing on in this moment. So what's 2024 bringing in for the sign of Virgo? You got two cards. The only one that's had two cards so far this, uh, this month and this year. So um, we have the presenting and then the opportunity. The presenting is Seven of Wands, which is being able to uh, multitask and also push back and work smarter. Seven of Wands can do any and everything they set their mind to, but sometimes they're doing one thing too many. So this often happens on the heel of success because um, people are looking at you and thinking, wow, you, you did a good job on that. How about this? Or um, this person doesn't say no. Let's just keep putting things on their plate because somehow they get it done. When there's one thing too many, say when, say enough, push back, delegate. Beneath this card, we have one of overextension, seven of pentacles reverse, depleted um, energy, diminishing returns. It's still a card where you can turn it around and see the necessary growth, but it takes time. You don't, you don't wanna rush anything, you don't wanna overextend, you don't wanna overpromise, and you can do that by pushing back and saying no, all right? So you have a chance to stand your ground and grow both finances and energy, especially for those of you that are feeling tired, since that's what came through with Sir Nunos. All right, let's shift the focus now and look at a final question that you might have for me. I've done my best to navigate everything, but I'm sure there's at least one more question um, in your life that you'd like me to look at. So let's give the cards a good shuffle and see the answer to that. It's a really positive one. As a yes or no, this is a yes, but let's break it down a little bit. Some of you are right on the precipice of completing something. So you may have asked, can I do it? Will I do it? Yes. The most difficult part of the journey is often that last couple of steps. And so don't lose uh, faith, hope, or momentum. Push through to the finish line. It's a self-care card, especially if you're shouldering a heavy burden. It can be an emotional burden. It can actually be a physical one if you're doing a lot of construction or if you're moving or if you're taking on too much. So make sure that, that you have proper self-care so not only can you make it to the finish line, but you can enjoy that moment afterwards. This is a card also associated with moving and traveling, which is also connected to this. So there's a necessary change or move that's happening for you. Make sure that you have the support that you need during that. As someone who injured themselves once in a move, I never carry my own boxes anymore without some assistance because I broke my foot once doing that. So I'm very, very careful to balance the load, to hire professional movers, and just not hurt myself because there are physical limitations. So if you can, whether it's like help from family, help from friends, etc., you don't have to do all of this alone. And I used like a physical move as an example, but this could also be something that you're dealing with emotionally. This could be something at work. Whatever you're carrying, the, this doesn't have to be alone because so many of the cards today were about support, um, about <laughs> partnership and being receptive to that partnership. And I believe if you can make peace with that, then you can thrive, not just in January, but in 2024, which is what it's all about, folks. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this reading and helping you kind of kick things off in the new year. Do me a favor, if you did enjoy this, hit the like and subscribe button and share it with someone as well so that uh, the message can get out there. You can join me on social media. It's at Nicholas Ashbaugh on all major platforms. And a reminder, I do not give any private readings. So if anyone ever messages you or offers a reading, it's not me. So just put that out there for your protection and for your information. You can always get official information on my website. And if you'd like to give back, the official way to do so is right here on YouTube. You can become a channel member and there are perks. You can see that on my main channel page. You can also give a super sticker, super thanks, or... Um, or also a super sticker, depending on if you're watching me live or if this is on replay. 
And finally, I always drop new videos on Monday, Thursday, and Friday, unless it's a holiday, and I will always announce that on my community tab. All right, everybody, that's it for this month. I thought I'd bring Apollo up for just a second. He's freshly groomed, looking great. All right, Apollo's now resting in his bed, but I want to end this by simply uh, extending some gratitude. And thank you for being the best part of what I do here. I wouldn't be able to be here without your love and support. And I'm really honored to be a part of your journey in self-discovery, intuitive development, and everything that goes along with that. So take care of yourselves, and I'll see you again in the new year. Bye-bye.